If you've been dealing with issues with bacterial contamination in your products and you're looking for a solution, then keep on watching this video. We've had a number of customers over the past years that have been running into the same issue. So we decided just to make a video to bring clarity to why your products can contaminate even when you're using the best materials and to offer a solution for those who are seeking help. We're gonna be taking a look at three different strains of spore syringes purchased from a reputable vendor to see what really is in a spore syringe. Now I've purchased from dozens of spore vendors over the years with identical results. So these syringes will simply serve as an example of what can commonly be seen across the marketplace. Here I'm inoculating green bags with each syringe and we'll see what happens over the course of four weeks. Later, we'll inoculate grain bags treated with an antibiotic and observe those results. And finally, we'll run the same study using agar plates to easily see what's happening in our grain bags. Here we are one week later, and we're going to take a look at the progress our spores have made in our bags. So we'll go ahead and start off with our first bag labeled syringe A. And on initial inspection, we have solid mycelial growth here by the inoculation port, and everything looks to be going well. So we'll go ahead and pull some focus and get a bit of a closer look at the grains, which look to be contamination free. And the bottom is also nice and healthy, which is a good sign. Next up, we have syringe B. So let's take it out of the bag and have a look. And on first impression, it doesn't seem like much is happening to be honest. So let's have a closer look at the grains. We do have a few spots of mycelium developing throughout, although it's a bit wispy and nowhere near as robust as the last bag. Here in the bottom, we do have a few more spots forming, but notice on the left, the grains have a sheen to them and they're turning a bit mushy, which indicates that bacteria are beginning to metabolize down the grain. We'll go ahead and leave the bag alone for now and come back to it here in a couple of weeks. Here's our last bag syringe C. So let's go ahead and pop it out of the bag for its initial inspection and see what we find. We do have a little activity by the inoculation port. However, you'll notice that the mycelium is also a bit wispy instead of the nice white strands which we'd like to see. As we take a closer look, we'll notice that a bit of condensation is forming around the grains, which is normal. However, we'll notice that the grains themselves also have that glossy sheen indicating the beginning stages of bacterial breakdown. So what we'll go ahead and do is take our three bags, mix them up, place them back into incubation and check up on them in two weeks. Here we are two weeks later and we're pulling out bag A. And as you can see, there's mycelium everywhere. The front, the bottom, the sides, the back. I would say this bag is fully colonized and ready to be added to some substrate. Here's bag B and we are not looking too good. Let's have a closer look. And as we can see here, the bacterial activity has advanced rapidly. As the bacteria is consuming the grain, it's metabolizing it down into this soggy liquid mess and the smell is very distinguishable. Somewhere in between fermentation and nightmares. Finally, bag C. And as we have a look, we do notice that there are some spots of that wispy mycelium dispersed throughout the grain, but not a whole lot of activity happening here. As we get a close up, we can see the individual grains beginning to essentially melt against the bag as the bacteria begins to break it down. So let's now move on to our next test where we use the same syringes to inoculate grain bags treated with an antibiotic. Here we are inoculating the remaining spores into the treated grain and for the sake of time, we'll jump right ahead to two weeks after inoculation. So we'll again start with bag A. We'll pull it out of the bag to have a closer look. And as expected with the syringe, the mycelium is growing nice and healthy. We have that thick white mycelium growing from the inoculation port and it's ready to be mixed up and incubated until it's fully colonized, maybe here in about four to six days time. Here's bag B and you can already see it's looking fantastic. Remembering how badly the original grain handled these spores, this is where we see the antibiotics are truly shining. You can see how the bag has zero bacterial breakdown. This is phenomenal. Here in a moment, we'll see how this is possible when we have a look at our agar plates, but do keep watching because things are about to get even more interesting. Lastly, we have bag C up to bat, and we're gonna go ahead and take it out and have a look. Upon initial inspection, we do have some mycelium growing here by the inoculation port. We don't have any evidence of degradation. This bag will continue colonizing effectively. Now, we don't wanna use antibiotics in grain applications. So a better method would be to start off with a clean syringe in the first place, that way we can avoid antibiotics altogether. This is done through the use of agar. So let's go ahead and get these spores onto some agar and have a look under the hood of these syringes. 
This test will show us what caused our initial grain bags to spoil and how the antibiotics were able to eliminate that contamination. Proper antibiotic use is considered safe because the amount of antibiotics used and the exposure time to them are so small that there's less chance for them to pass down the food chain. We simply want to use them when needed, then go right back to non-treated mediums for cultivation and culture storage. So let's go ahead and get started with the agar. Syringe A, B, and C will each inoculate three plates per syringe. So here we are adding the spores onto our regular plates, so no antibiotics. And we're going to set them aside for one week and have a look at them. For the first inoculation, I like to simply add the syringe strain I'm working with to each plate. So here we just have A, B, and C. And once I get to the first round of isolation, I'll then start adding numbers to each plate to keep track of the subsequent rounds of isolation. So this is just my method. You can use it or use something better if you like something better. But here we are, ready with our plates. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at them here one week later. Now here's where things get fascinating. I'm going to show you each plate one by one so you can see the similarities between the plates in each set. We're going to start off with the first plate in set A. So just give me a moment here while I pull the plate into focus. And as you can see, we have nice fluffy mycelium throughout the plate. However, we also see these small colonies of bacteria growing as well. These are the little round dots you'll notice spread all across the surface of the plate. Here's the second plate for syringe A, and you'll notice the same bacterial colonies forming throughout the plate, with the densest colonies forming between the 12 and the 3 o'clock position. Now, what you'll begin to notice as we go into this third plate is that every dish grows a random variation of contaminants along with the mycelium. So there's no real guarantee we can make on how healthy a plate will be until we actually have a look at it. This plate, for example, seems to have the worst contamination of all three dishes in the set. Now, this is interesting to note. Although each plate received the same amount of spores from the same syringe, the levels of contamination between each plate varies considerably. This is why some grain bags will colonize while others won't, even though we make inoculations using the same syringe. Sometimes the bacterial levels are simply higher in one inoculation, and that extra bacteria ends up colonizing the grain faster than our spores can germinate. As we get into the first plate of syringe B, immediately we see bacteria have consumed the entire plate. Not a single strand of mycelium is growing despite the large amounts of spores that we added. This is great because now we can finally see why our syringe B spawn bag had degraded so rapidly before it was treated with antibiotics. And as we open up the second plate, you'll see that we still have no mycelium. Now there are many factors that can contribute to this during the manufacturing of each individual syringe, but without actually being able to witness how the spores were harvested and the syringes made, we can't be sure at what part of the manufacturing process this bacteria was introduced. So with the third plate being viewed and no difference seen, we seem to have hit a roadblock with this syringe. Luckily, we do have our antibiotics, so later we'll see if we can clean it up on a plate treated with genomycin. Let's take a look at the first plate of syringe C and see what we're working with. It looks like we have an even distribution of mycelium and a different kind of bacteria now. This is fascinating because every plate we've seen is growing a different type of bacteria that is only found within the plates of its set. This points to a possibility that this manufacturer may have different spore print suppliers. And while the manufacturer itself may be completely sterile during the production of its syringes, these contaminants could have piggybacked onto the spore prints themselves during printing. Now that we've gone through all of our plates, let's focus on how we can solve our dilemma with the cards we've been dealt. As with the regular agar, syringe A, B, and C will each get three antibiotic plates. We will quickly run through each set and see how much difference this simple solution really does make and see firsthand why our antibiotic spawn bags worked so well. Here we are one week after inoculating our antibiotic plates. Notice how I've labeled these plates with a G to denote the gentamicin used in the recipe. So we'll go ahead and start with the first plate of syringe A. I'm going to pull some focus here. We'll remove the lid and have a look. It'll take just a moment for the focus to come into view. However, you'll instantly see the difference with these plates when compared to the regular agar plates we just saw. Even with syringe A originally being our cleanest syringe, we did see some bacteria throughout the regular plates. With these plates, we see no indication of bacteria at all. So let's move on to our second plate and see if this still holds true. We do notice that the plate is covered with mycelium, but again, there is no indication of bacteria being present. Another win with this plate. Let's have a look at the last plate of the set and see if we're three for three. Now, here's something fascinating. Take a look on the left. 
Here's where the limitations of antibiotics can be seen. While genomycin is a strong inhibitor of bacteria, bacteria will still try to grow, so it's not uncommon to see a colony here or there that stalls out as the antibiotics work their magic. Let's move on to the first plate of syringe B. Keeping in mind that we got absolutely no mycelium on a regular plate with this syringe. Now here's something interesting. While there is still no indication of mycelium, we can clearly see a streak of inhibited bacteria along the edge of the plate. If no antibiotics were present, this streak would have quickly multiplied and devoured the entire plate as it had in the regular dishes we saw. Moving on to the second plate of the set, let's find out if our luck is a little bit better. And it looks like we got good news. We've managed to get viable mycelium from this filthy syringe. And while we do see a couple of stalled colonies of bacteria on the plate, they're going nowhere and we can easily transfer this mycelium on a regular plate. We do this because, just as with people, antibiotics are best when used as needed, rather than as a preventative measure. Let's take a peek at our third plate and see what we find. We've seen great results so far, so we're on the right track. All right, it looks like we have more mycelium. A few inhibited colonies of bacteria are present, but we can easily transfer this to a fresh plate and start the isolation process. Now to finish off strong with our last set, syringe C. Here's the first plate. It looks like we have a lot of mycelium on the plate, but perhaps there's some bacteria we can find. To my eyes, I don't see any, which is great, but it is possible that some mycelium has grown over it. Overall, I'll count this as a win. Moving on to our second plate, we do see a lot of mycelium and don't notice any bacteria. We'll go ahead and count this plate as a win as well. Time for a third and final plate and I'm feeling pretty positive about this one. And it looks great. Beautiful mycelium throughout, no indication of bacteria. We can simply take a transfer to a non-treated plate and continue the process. We'll be posting a separate video showing the continuation of this isolation process using agar plates. So, if you're ready to ditch those dirty syringes, then we have a few products that will get you there quickly. This is a new automated plate pour that we just invested into. It works by loading petri dishes onto a rack, which the machine then lowers onto a revolving carousel one at a time. The carousel spins around a UVC antibacterial lamp and precisely fills each dish with the media. The dishes then continue around the carousel where they're lifted back up onto the rack for further cooling. This machine is typically used in high-end laboratories and it costs 30 grand brand new, but it allows us to offer completely consistent petri dishes for your mycological needs. We'll offer petri dishes both with and without antibiotics in varying quantities. So they're perfect if you want to skip the whole hassle of pouring dishes yourself and want to get straight to the isolating. But if you like to pour your own plates, there are some advantages to that as well. Now I've poured my own plates for years and you can even pour your own dishes using sterilized jars, just like the ones I've used throughout this video. So if you'd like to pour your own plates as needed, then you can use our ready to pour agar. This agar comes sterilized and simply needs to be reheated. Once it reaches the proper temperature, the agar will liquefy and it can be poured into as many dishes as you need. Any unused agar can then be saved in the same bottle for a future pour. Once the dishes are cooled completely, they'll solidify and be ready for immediate use. Here's a completely cool dish that's ready for a fresh transfer. So go ahead and pick up some plates from us, someone else, or pour your own and get isolating. When you grow, we grow. We hope you enjoyed this video and we welcome any questions. Reach out to us at hello at freshcultivators.com and pick up your supplies at freshcultivators.com. We hope this video sheds some light on how to clean your syringes and gets you one step closer to your goals. Until next time, we wish you the most bountiful harvests.